I look fucking handsome. Let's go, bro. <laughs> Let's go. I'm leaving that in too. Yeah, dude. Honestly, fuck give it. it we'll to me. start for we'll start with that. Rob, back in the building. Yeah, dude. I fucking feel good today. This is good lighting. <laughs> Yo, the glasses are tremendous. Honestly, I started wearing these because I liked them because they cover all the sun that can hit in your eyes. And then I now I'm looking at it between this, the mustache, gray T-shirt, and the chain. <sighs> Watch out, Vegas. You look important, bro. I am important. That's the thing. You are right. You are right. But. To the casual eye that don't know you, they're like, this guy got to be something. People like see me in public and go, is that guy part owner of a third division Austrian football team? And the, the answer, answer is yes. Yes. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You got me wanting to own a professional team. Just bro. buy in with me. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm down. Join the club. FC I, Pingo. I, <clears throat> this time of year, as everyone knows, it's been following veterans minimum. I like to dive into the NFL. And one thing I like doing is... I like to get fans of certain teams to come and do division previews. Yep. Now, I don't know what your favorite team is, but I know the last time that we spoke, you had like a boner for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Me and several other sharp sports bettors, I'll put that out there. Yeah. Now, this will blow your mind. I used to be a Colts fan for the longest time. I think that has died off. Okay. Based on my betting for this year, uh, I don't like the Colts to do much of anything, and I bet against them quite a bit if people ask me who i'm a fan of honestly i think i'm a fan of the san francisco 49ers now and people are like you can't switch teams and the answer is yes i can and if you look at the Colts culture and everything that's gone on do you blame me peyton manning left and then everything blew up yeah uh, i don't agree with you being able to switch teams though it's okay <clears throat> were you a colts fan like growing up yeah since i was like, like grade six or something grade five when i started watching football and stuff it's just been like there's, it, there comes a point in time in your life as a man where you have to make a decision. Are you going to do what's best or are you going to do what you've been doing? And I decided to do what's best and pick a new team. <laughs> I, in, in any aspect of life, in any aspect of life, I'm with you. Not when it comes to your sports teams. You got to be ride or die, son. You got to go through. <laughs> it builds character. It builds loyalty. It builds trust. It builds... It's, it's what it's like to be a man, bro. Like, yeah, I'm a Mets and Knicks fan. I've been going through shit my whole life. The Giants have been abysmal for a decade until last season. And even last season was kind of a joke. I think it builds character. I think you are a punk bitch if you change teams. Ride or die, son. Yeah, it's just like I can't. I don't get excited anymore. Do you think that betting and creating content has taken that away from you? In, a, in some ways, Yes, but like there was a while where I just like wouldn't watch the Colts games anymore. Mm. Like you couldn't. They're like, who's up next? I'm like, Carson Wentz. Yes, let's watch him wait to the last second when he should have thrown the ball five seconds ago and then have him throw an interception and blow both of his ankles out. Yeah, You're going to tell me that you could sit goal. there and then that happens basically every year with some like silly stuff. They're like, this guy's the guy. And I'm like, he's 38. Can we not? Except for Philip Rivers. Shout out to that guy and his 50 kids. Yeah. That guy was building his own football team. <laughs> what is he like nine deep 10 deep <clears throat> as deep as you get he's been just putting them out bro sometimes you got to do what you got to do i agree with you that's why he played for so long too because he got a, a lot of mouths to feed a lot of kids to send to college the afc south you are big on the jaguars oh. i want you to tell me how do you feel about this division because i think what's crazy is last year is the highest number you'll ever get on the jaguars ever for the time being, mm -hmm. maybe like the next decade. I think now, as long as Trevor Lawrence is there, they have a serious contender in Jacksonville. I think that he is that kind of quarterback. I love Doug, Doug Peterson. I think he's an amazing quarterback for this team. Uh, amazing head coach, excuse mm -hmm. me. Now, I don't know if he's going to be there for a decade plus. It does help that he has a quarterback. Yep. Usually when you find the, your quarterback thing, it's like, I remember hearing this analogy a while back. It's like, well, you can buy now. You don't need to rent if yep. you're a head coach and a GM. And I think that's what they got in Jacksonville. They got a lot of talent, a lot of young talent too. You're never going to see them with a plus number next to their division. They're minus 160 right now, and mm. I think that's wrong. I think they should be minus 300. And I got them at minus 150 and minus 140 when the lines came up. So I tried to get on that one really early. I was losing a poker game in like I lost a hand because I thought I had different cards because I was sitting on the DraftKings app punching everything in to try and you know get my stuff in because one beauty now is they put everything out so early and if you go quick you can get closing line value I know I was going to get that tattooed on my forehead because I say it so much yeah that's your shit but um 
Yeah, I mean, if you make, want to make another analogy, the Colts have been living out of a hotel for like five years, and now you have a team who's buying a mansion in the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they have a lot of money coming in, and they paid cash. That's effectively the situation we're looking at. No matter how you want to pay it, business side, sports side, they've done the same thing. I'm just looking at this division and going, if Jacksonville doesn't win... I don't know what I would do. If there was a gun to my head right now, I would blatantly say, yes, Jacksonville, I completely think they will. I put my life on it. That's how confident I am in them, unless something bad happens. But if you look at something bad happening, my fraternity brother, I love you, Urban, but you almost blew this team up in this fantastic quarterback. Urban Meyer should have realistically burnt the thing down to the ground with them, and they got very lucky. They were able to build it right back up and get going again. It's, a, it's almost a miracle. Yeah, but that's what happens when you have that quarterback. He's legit. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Trevor Lawrence is legit. He's everything that we thought he would be. And I think last, last year, you were able to see that. Like, I remember I remember hearing some funky, funky conversations about Trevor Lawrence. Like, ah, yeah. he's the wor- he's going to end up being the worst quarterback of the bunch. It's like, really? Like, look at the situation he's in. I think people look at him with the long hair and, like, being, like, a pretty boy and, like, want him not to do well. That There's a lot to that. But also, I think it's anytime you have such a sure thing, people want to shit on it. Oh, 100%. People want to nitpick. Like, even if the whole world is saying yes to something, you know you're going to have a majority of people being like, nah, just nah, bro. I mm-hmm. don't see it. And it's... You want to be on that side of the fence? Or are you just saying it to be hot takey? And it's like a thing if you look at Jacksonville, they're the team that was going to Europe. They're like, yeah, I get these guys over there. No one at, you know, in Jacksonville wants to watch these guys. No one in North America cares about these guys. And Jacksonville's flipped on a dime. And because they have an owner who's going, yeah, I think it's really paying off for them. But they've built depth and gotten guys they had no business getting. And also got guys that people thought, ah, he's washed. And then they're not washed. It's worked out so beautiful down there in Jacksonville. I want to go down there and sit in the hot tub and watch a game. Who would have thought that Jacksonville would be a destination for people? Would, I've, I've been to Jacksonville. I went yeah. to Jacksonville for the Super Bowl when the Pats played the Eagles. It is a, it's a small city where, <clears throat> dude, they had to bring like yachts and boats to be able to fit all the people that came to visit for the Super Bowl. And it was a team that was the butt of the joke. Like, I was the Colts fan for the longest times, and, like, Jacksonville rolls up, and I'm like, <laughs> good one. Like, they were the penny, and everyone else was a dollar bill. And now it's flipped, and I like that. But they, it points to parity in the NFL, which is something that's important. Some of these other sports leagues, you don't see it as much. And you also don't see teams that were down bad as Jacksonville was for the longest time it's, to then come to be the thing. They are, they are like, the... Almost, that not maybe I'm talking too early. If they have a good year this year. They're the example of what NFL teams should be doing. Yeah, but I I agree with you. But there's a reason why quarterbacks make fifty million dollars a year. Yep, and it's because when you get one, now all of a sudden Cincinnati is playing seven primetime games. Yep, Kansas City. Kansas City was always good, so they might be a bad example, but they weren't this good. No, where a guy is going to make half a billion dollars because he's their quarterback. Now Jacksonville is a marquee destination for people to tune in and watch. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you find a quarterback. That's what happened to Jacksonville, and that's why they were able to turn it around so quickly. And now when you factor in the biggest addition in this division for me, Calvin Ridley. Yep. Has to be. Yep. Calvin Ridley is a legit top 10 wide receiver. He's been that dude for a while. It's just that he was overshadowed overshadowed by Mount St. Julio. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite, if not my favorite wide receiver of all time. But he steps away because he had to serve a suspension because he was one of us. He was doing the thing. If you degen, you are one of us. All right? Just remember that. So we will have your back if you're an athlete and you gamble. However, don't ask us for money when you need uh, to pay the bills when you got suspended. Yeah. But you are one of us. So Calvin Ridley, legit top 10 wide receiver. He's exactly what they missed on this offense. Yeah, and they needed it. They needed, it. and they got him for a good price too. If you look at things, like it's a bit of amazing a amazing price. Um, they weren't sure if he was going to be allowed to come back in the NFL. They made an example of him enough, and then somehow everyone went, "Nah, it's okay. I'm just going to keep betting on the NFL." Like it wasn't clear. A already. lot of Colts players. Do you want to talk about the Colts? We'll get to them. Do you have wow. an addition in there? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't really ha- no because I feel like the only addition in this division is Calvin Ridley. Like you can make a case for 
for the two rookie yeah. quarterbacks coming in. But <clears throat> for me, when I'm doing this segment and in my mind, when I think of addition and subtraction, it needs to be a commodity that we've seen before. And yeah. we've seen Calvin Ridley. We've seen how good he is. He is a touchdown machine. He is a receiver that could line up everywhere despite – I don't know how tall he is, but I know he's not like 6'6", six, six, yeah. right? But he's also not like a 5'8 slot wide receiver. He's a guy that's very versatile, and he's an amazing route runner, one of the best route runners in the league. Um, Devontae Adams was in here with Brandon Marshall. They were doing their show, and he mentioned Calvin Ridley. Brandon Marshall was like, what? He's like, bro, he is, he is a legit route runner. He's a legit weapon. And you look at their offense. You got Evan Ingram, had a great year for them last year. They brought him back. Etienne in the backfield. You got Christian Kirk. You got Zay Jones. What you really needed was an an actual alpha. Yep. And now everyone slots. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Calvin Ridley can have the similar impact to this offense that AJ Brown had with Philly. Yeah, and I think one point that people seem to get uh, lost in is in this division, how many rookie quarterbacks are there? Yeah. There's a lot. So Jacksonville's in a position to clean up the division because there's going to be a lot of fresh meat to begin the year. Now, could one of these quarterbacks come out and do the thing? Yeah, they could come out and be the guy. I just don't feel as confident as maybe some of these other divisions with how everything's going to go. There's a lot of fresh pieces here. So if you look at all the additions, all the positive things that are happening for these other teams outside of Jacksonville, we don't know what those things are going to end up being. So that's it. They're the only... They're the only team in this division that you know for a fact what's going to happen at quarterback. Everything yep. else is an unknown. Like I don't know what's happening in Tennessee. Do you? No. Will Levis is there now. You got Malik Willis from the year before. You got Tannehill and shit. Like, yeah. <clears throat> it's rough. But for me, it's it's Calvin Ridley. And I think Calvin Ridley is going to have a similar impact to A.J. Brown in the sense where now, all right, like when A.J. Brown got to Philly, Devontae Smith is now – your number two wide receiver. And you saw the year that he had. Things opened up for Dallas Goddard, the way they're going to open up for Evan Ingram. You had the running backs out the backfield. I think that's a, that's a real thing. And Trevor Lawrence is going to finally have a weapon that I think, not that he doesn't trust Christian Kirk because he exceeded expectations with that contract. Like everyone yeah. was shitting on Christian Kirk when he got that contract. But now everyone falls into place. And I think that's why Calvin Ridley is the biggest addition in this division. And that's part of the reason why I'm so big on the Jets for season wins. Like I have them at over 11. I took that 11 and a half. Um, I took them to win the Super Bowl. I took the Jags to win uh, the division. Uh, I'm, I'm big time on them. And I think they're a smart bet right now just based on, they were plus 2,800 for like months to win the Super Bowl. I look at that and I think it dropped to like plus 2,500. 25 to 1 right now yeah. to win the Super Bowl. They're 15 to 1 to win the AFC. They're minus 165 to win the division, and they're minus 192 to make the playoffs. I took all of them, and I yeah. think they're all. I, I mean, you can't put too many of your boats, you know, in one spot at one time because what if there's a fire? They might all burn down. So I've also gone against some other teams. Like I'm big down Philly's downfall, but if the Jags do what they need to, it puts me in a good position futures wise. Um, and I think it's reasonable and I, there can be some doubt with anything every single year, week three, things can just fall, completely fall apart. But, um, percentage wise, i would say I'm like in the high 75s for level of confidence. And I think that's saying a lot. Cause usually I wouldn't say I'm that confident when it comes to subtraction in this division. What do you got? It's tough to say. If you look at the Colts, the subtraction is because they keep having their guys bet on their own team, betting rushing props. And they had a very dangerous guy catching some balls that was able to run things back, and he's gone. And it's one thing if you're betting some stuff, but if you're betting rushing props on your own damn team, there's a culture problem there. Is that culture problem going to be fixed in in Indianapolis? I don't I don't know. Yeah. But you look at some of, like, the Colts take a hit, Tennessee takes a hit for six games. I think the really big subtractions, you're going to see a lot of these guys just, the teams thought they were going to have something set up earlier in the year, and, and now it's gone because of a stupid, stupid mistake. It's so weird that you can't bet. I understand, and you shouldn't bet on your own sport. Yep. <clears throat> but there's been some guys that have gotten in trouble for betting on other sports. And yes. that, I don't understand. It's, they don't want them using the apps and stuff in some of these dual facilities, potentially, where you have other people coming in. What if someone's getting medical treatment from one team and you're getting inside information? Because you, you know, that type of stuff, I think, is part of the reason why. But for different sports, though? They don't want you betting in the facilities. So you can bet on other sports. You just can't do it from in the facility or in the team hotel or while you're traveling with okay. the team. So there's that stuff. Like the Tennessee guy goes, I thought I was good. I was betting college basketball. I didn't realize the team hotel. 
I can't do that because it's a team facility technically. That stuff, I can theorize the sports books pressure or like the NFL's pressure one way or the other. But betting on the NFL is inexcusable, I think. But what? why is that bad? And I want to have a conversation because I'm fascinated by this topic. Why is that bad? But when the Pro Bowl was here in Vegas, I saw a lot of big name players at the craps table, just roulette tables. Why is that okay? Because the NFL only cares about protecting the shield, getting the money in, and getting the bonuses for everybody. The owners just want things squeaky clean. They don't want any issues. The sports books all don't want there to be drama. They don't want to have people come in and say this game was fixed. The NFL has trouble with viewership when they think things are shitty. And it, things can get very shitty when you have replacement refs or people think that the games are rigged. And if you see players betting and a big name gets pulled into one of these things and you've seen them had a bad game when they were supposed to win, you're going to start thinking, did he bet the under on everything and for his team to lose? Mm. I think that would be very bad for the NFL. So I think there's a few facets to it. No, I I totally agree with you. But my thing that I don't understand is why do some players get in trouble if they're in the NFL and they're betting on the NBA Finals? Like, why is that bad? I, the team hotel thing, I don't like. I can understand why they might be saying it. They just don't want the players to bet. Really, it's like some of the UFC guys can't even sign up for DraftKings. Mm. That's been brought up before. Uh, they just don't want them betting on anything. And the NFL would prefer it if they were actually allowed to say, "You guys can't gamble on sports." I think they would actually do that. But there's not a problem with this in the NHL, WNBA, the NBA, not really as much. Um, pro soccer in North America, you don't have this problem. Like I can keep going. So it's MLB, not as much of a problem. NFL, it seems like it's a consistent storyline. So they got to figure some stuff out. Or is everyone leaving the prep meetings when you get drafted into the NFL when they start talking about the subject? Could be. There's something on. There's something going on there. But it, it really hurts the Colts. The Colts are losing two players like that because they're obviously going to have a bit of a trouble recruiting because everyone knows how stinky they're going to be. And losing valuable <clears> names <throat> like that is is not good. I mean, also like mine. Mine were the Colts as well. Like they lose Stephon Gilmore. Mm. And then they also lose Okariki, who goes to the Giants. Like, you lost two more pieces off your defense. And they were supposed to have all these like, pieces in place already, and they were supposed to be ready to go for the past, what, has it been three seasons in a row? People keep saying they're ready to go. This team is ready. They just need a quarterback. Well, those Man, pieces been, are falling apart. Nah, it's, it's my boy Andrew Luck left them high and dry. Yeah, I think that had a big they impact. They haven't recovered since then. Yeah, and I think they've just, they, they tried to Band-Aid stuff and thought they could get away without the quarterback, and I don't think yeah. that's possible. And it, it's... It, it, what are you going to do if you could try and put these guys in every single year and they don't get used to the system and then people get fired and new people come in then Jeff Saturday comes in and that goes the way it does and then you have players doing dumb stuff in the locker room. Oh, man, Jeff Saturday plus 260 when they played the Raiders. I was on that money line big, big on that money line. Six and a half points, I put them in my contest also. Just because it was, it was one of those weeks where public perception in the NFL probably – swings me the most of any of this yeah <clears throat> we've talked about this in the past when it comes to mma if you tell me like 99.9 percent .9 of the bets are on uh you know volkanovsky it's not going to change anything if i think volkanovsky is going to win yeah but in the nfl if you tell me that like yo bro i just got the report there's 92 percent of the, the the bets are coming in on on the colts plus six i'm gonna be like oh fuck well i can't i can't play that now no I'm not going to play that. I'm not saying that I'm going to take the the Bengals minus six now. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a pass for me. But with the Colts, that game, I just remember everybody shitting on Jeff Sha uh, Jeff Saturday. Yep. And it was such a good spot where, like, everybody was telling me Raiders were a lock. Like, everybody. And every segment was, how is Jeff Saturday the head coach? How can he be the head coach? What did he do to deserve this job? Uh, oh my God, they're so going to win. And they won. Yeah. They'll win it. And that's the thing. Public perception can sway uh, futures too. And you start to see like people, oh, yeah. people talk about these big teams and everyone's ha talking about Kansas City repeating and stuff. And that leaves the opportunity for a Jacksonville because of the way the public's getting on things. It's hard for you to repeat too, bro. Oh, repeating any sport is is tough. The NFL, I think it can be one of the more difficult ones because of how many pieces can change in the off season. To, your team can be statistically and fundamentally different just off of like three guys leaving because of the schemes you're going to run on defense or like that receiver that you're able to throw the ball up to in the emergency situation not and being injuries, there anymore. And injuries too. Yep. Like 
Kansas City has been one of the luck. I talked about this recently. Three of the luckiest teams in the NFL when it comes to injury health. Mm-hmm. Kansas City, the Bengals, and the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Just consistently, those three teams, they've had the least amount of players on IR over the last couple of years. Yeah, and it's a big thing, too, with <clears throat> the injuries that teams sustain in the first couple of weeks. That can be a big factor, too. So when you're trying to, like, people talk about not locking all of your money up really early on futures because then there might be some bigger opportunities available to you in week three, week four because a bunch of injuries happen and maybe you can hedge. There's some stuff that that can really change with injuries in the NFL. But if you get lucky and your team just is able to be the team that you had in the offseason in OTAs and in minicamp, you're more likely to win because just repetition. It seems like we've just talked about, we've only praised the Jaguars. <laughs> and we've, I mean, we haven't even mentioned Houston, haven't even mentioned Tennessee. Basically, I've been shitting on the Colts. Yeah. I want to... I want to buy into the Titans because everybody is off them. When I mean buy in, like, you know, seven and a half wins. Mike Vrabel is one of those guys. Like him and Brian Dable, I feel, are carbon copies of one another in each conference. Mm. Both of them get way more than they should out of their teams. Everybody's off Tennessee. They're plus 380 to win the division. They haven't really lost anyone of substance from last year's team. Obviously, we don't know what they're doing at quarterback, which is massive. Yep. But also, when you're looking at this division, it's really just one other team that knows what they're doing at quarterback. Everyone else, it's kind of, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what happens with these rookies. If you had to praise one of these three teams, which one would it have to be? Tennessee seems like the team that can middle of the packet the best out of any of them. Houston, I have zero faith in. And same. Colts, I have a little bit more faith, I would say, than Houston. With Tennessee, because they didn't lose as much and they have a good coach, and we've seen them kind of be able to like gut things up and you know tough things out, I, Tennessee's really the only one that you could take some stuff on. on I, I suppose you could take unders on the two other teams. But yeah, if I'm looking for a team to like do well or at least do something, Tennessee, I think, would have to be the only option. That's stable. So hard to like get convinced by that. I'm not. I'm not saying that I disagree with you. It's just yeah. like the the cases for every other team are pretty rough. And if you evaluate this based on other divisions, it's like you have way more confidence and stuff. The Colts have like the Colts in this division. It's just it's a stinky division that's re- like making Jacksonville look like a prized flower. Oh yeah. That's the biggest appeal to the Jaguars is that they have this shit division that they're in. Yeah, they might steal six easy ones. Yeah. At worst, I think they're they're five and one in the division. Yeah, and if if you could bet on that one, that'd be an interesting too. That'd be an interesting line to look at too. If you might be able to get better odds than say them to win the division. Mm. There could be there could be some. I feel like that's something that might come later down the road. Like if you could create a bet, like what can the team's division record be? Like over on their four and a half games. I may have seen it before but off the look we get some crazy stuff up in ontario with all of our sports books we get some of the european ones that offer some a wild lot of lines crazy shit. hell yeah, yeah. and but, what would you say storyline in this division if you had to pick one i mean one big storyline is like the, the titans cut the only good half of busting with the boys so like you know that 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 could be that could uh that could come to, one. yeah that could come to back to bite them i, I get that guy got injured but like again a good player so him dipping out could be something to talk about. Um, but I think the really the, what the NFL will hit the head over is going to be all of these new quarterbacks, and they're going to keep talking about it. And then eventually by week eight, we can have them talk about two out of the three, and then maybe one out of the three by week you know week eleven. It's going to be a lot of these young kids. Yeah, the one the one that jumped out to me that I think could be an interesting one would be Anthony Richardson for Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Rookie of the year, I believe he's at 10 to 1 in some places, but he does a lot of the things that could help him get mm-hmm. rookie of the year in the sense of, you know, he could throw, he likes to run also. He's very versatile like that. And it won't take much. Like another one, staying with the theme of the South, like I, I'd much rather bet Bryce Young to win rookie of the year at plus 500 than the Panthers to win the division at plus 350. Because I feel as if. 
the Panthers were to make the playoffs or win the division, it would mean that Bryce Young had a monster year. Yeah. Chances are he's the number one pick. They'll probably make him rookie of the year. And with this division, I think that if the Colts have any success, like the Colts to make the playoffs, which is crazy to think about because the only way they can make the playoffs is to win the division. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of similar to what I was talking about last year with the Jaguars. Only one team is coming out of this division that's making the playoffs. It's going to be the yeah. division winner. So again, if you are higher on the Colts or the Titans or the Texans, bet them to win the division. Don't bet them to make the playoffs because – AFC is loaded, right? Like, how much yeah. better would you feel about the Jaguars, bro, if they were in the NFC? I think I'd put a lot more money in, and considering yeah. how big I am down on some of the NFC teams. Yeah, bro. But also my Giants bets, though, you got to think about that one, too. So, like, it's a bit of a... I think I found two really good people that that team... People weren't talking about the Jaguars nearly as much as they are right now. Like, mm. it's picked up a lot. But no one's... I don't think anybody's still really talking about the Giants. Yeah. So, um, realigning the divisions in the conferences could be interesting someday. I think you could potentially have a really interesting year as opposed to sometimes we get a bit repetitive with how dog water some teams have been. But Jacksonville Saints have broken that mold a little bit. But Oh, dude, imagine if you had imagine if you had both New York teams and both Pennsylvania teams. There'd be so many fist division. fights. That'd be fucking bar fights. Yeah, security everywhere would get Sheesh, not even at good. the facilities, just like at the games, but like you're you're at your mom and pop bar down in Anywhere in New York, you'd have to have. Yeah. You get you get Miami, Tampa, Jacksonville, and, like, the Saints. Yeah. You know, different regions of the country. Like, why is Kansas City in the AFC West, bro? Yeah, it's uh, There's so many of these things. It's the NHL, you can look at the same yeah. thing, too, when Detroit was in the Western Conference for so long. It's just this is how things have been. I want to put a bow on this division by saying I think it's the most – Boring division. Oh, 100%. This is oatmeal with no seasoning. Which sucks because the Jaguars, I think, could legit be the top seed in the AFC next year. I hope so because Papa wants his money. Yeah. That'd be a good bet to make too, bro. Last year, I had Philly to have the best record in football at 30-1. to 1. Only had $10 on it, but I have still a, I have Philly under 9.5 this year. Philly under 9.5. I'm, I'm predicting the implosion. It's over Philadelphia. Wow. I would love that. I, I, I don't. We just dropped the NFC East episode. If you guys haven't checked that out, go and check that out. But like what I said on that show, bro, the one thing that I find so interesting about Philly is historically, I'd be with you. Yeah. I'm just looking at the rest of the NFC. I'm like, man, it's so hard to pick against them. Best offensive line, best defensive line in football, a combination of both. Just a lot of talent on the field, man. And the schedule isn't even that ridiculous for a team that just went to the Super Bowl. No, and the schedule, I like because I put some of these bets in before we got the schedules out, another thing you and I talked about. And, yeah, maybe I wouldn't have done some of this, but I put the money in. I put the bets down. I'm doubling down on it. And also because I don't like the city of Philadelphia because their fans were trying to tell me that I lost $2,000 on a plus 2,000 bet for the 49ers to win the Super Bowl. And I was one out of four chance of it hitting. And they're like, you just lost two grand. Way to flush two grand. And I go, you guys don't even know what a betting line is. Yeah, they probably didn't. They definitely didn't. To be making that trash city, trash. City. I'm with you, bro. I don't like Philadelphia at all. No. People, Monte people Mitchkov like, is gonna die in Philadelphia. Guy with an attitude problem going to John Tortorella into a city with an attitude problem. Boy, I love Tortorella. That was my guy. Forever playing two one hockey games. That's <laughs> what I think of John Tortorella. Uh, I guess have, off track so easy. Just yeah. diverted a different direction. I love it, man. I love it. Hey, tell the people where they can find you. Also, at the other Babs, NFL. Hockey mostly. I own part of a third division Austrian football team, as you all know. And MMA stuff at one round with Rob. I'm pretty much doing everything until brands decide to give me a lot of money. At Nick Day is 10 as you can find me. Veterans minimum on all social media outlets. And we'll catch you guys next time.